Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have the top three beauty products of each category. So I've been watching this video on YouTube for the last few months and I absolutely love them. I love seeing what people kind of classify as being their absolute favorites of each category. It's one of the things that I love the most. I know that when I first started watching YouTube, people would post like their monthly favorites or their like seasonal favorites, almost as if it was like clockwork. And it's definitely something that I've really missed from the YouTube community. And I definitely want to try and make it an effort for myself personally to share with you guys my absolute favorites on an ongoing basis. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to kind of kickstart that and kind of show you guys my top favorites as of now. And then hopefully moving forward, I'll be able to do a favorites video every few months, fingers crossed. So first category is primer. So this one is an eye primer, but I thought it kind of was best in this category. This is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter. It is an eye primer that I use for my eyelids. I'm guessing you could probably use it elsewhere on your face. I personally haven't, but I use this on my eyelids and it makes sure that my eyeshadows do not crease. I will admit, because we've been in lockdown and I only wear my makeup for a few hours, I've been a little bit slack using this product, but this is a product that I cannot live without. If I'm actually going out into the world and I'm wearing eyeshadow, I do not skip this step whatsoever. It is a favorite and it's been a favorite of mine for at least, I think I bought it the first time in 2018. So it's been a favorite ever since it's been in my collection. I absolutely love this stuff. For face primer, I absolutely adore the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. This is an all-in-one primer and moisturizer, and I absolutely adore this as a primer. I don't use this as my sole moisturizer. I definitely moisturize, I definitely put on my sunscreen, and then I will put on this, but it is just great. I feel like my skin looks absolutely stunning when I have this on, and I can definitely notice a difference when I don't apply it. And then my lucky last primer favorite is from Clarins, and this is their Instant Smooth Perfect Touch Primer. So I use this, I only use a very little amount, but it kind of looks like this in the pot. And I just really apply it to the targeted areas on my face where I do have pores. So I really just apply it here. I know that when I was younger, I used to use like very, I guess, heavy now looking back compared to this, very heavy pore filling products. And this is definitely not that. This is like applying a feather to your face. It is so much more light than say Benefit Professional or like that type of primer. This is just so beautiful and it doesn't feel like really heavy on your skin. It's just a light cream and it just kind of washes over the pores. Don't get me wrong. I feel like it doesn't like blank out my pores like how Professional used to, although... I was a lot younger then, so I probably didn't have as deep a pores, but it does definitely reduce the appearance of them. And that's kind of the look that I want these days. It's not more so the fact that I want to have like no pores. It's just that I want to have reduced pores, if that makes any sense at all. So let's move on to foundation. My first one is actually a BB cream. Now this is the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream. I have mine in the shade number 27, Honey Beige. I'll put a little bit on the back of my hand so you guys can see. But it's just, oh, you can barely see it. It's just that color there. You can barely see it on my hand because it actually does match my skin quite well. And I, oopsie, I almost got that on my shirt. That would have been great. I love the fact that it is plastic and that it comes with a pump. It's just so easy to distribute. And also it's SPF 42. So I always put on my SPF and then over the top, I'll put on my Misha BB cream if I'm going to like work or if I'm going like out exercising or anything like that, where I want to put on a little bit of makeup. So the next is a foundation that's been a favorite of mine for a very, very long time. This one is by Makeup Atelier. It's really, really hard to see because the actual writing on the bottle is starting to rub away, but it's called the Waterproof Foundation. This foundation is full coverage and I absolutely love it. I do plan on filming a review video of this, so whether that goes up before or after this video, I'm not really too sure, but I will be definitely doing a video on this very soon. I absolutely love it. It is exceptional and I've been using it for so long. It's just absolutely great and it photographs beautifully. And lastly for foundation is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. This foundation has recently come into 
my top favorites. It actually came into my favorites very quickly. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. And I've actually been reaching for this so much over the last few months. It's absolutely beautiful. And I feel like their actual shade selection compared to my skin is so spot on. I absolutely love it. It's the foundation that I have on my skin today. I absolutely love their neutral range. I think that their tones are so spot on and I love the fact that I don't have to mix my foundation to get the right color match when I'm fake tanned. So I feel like that is quite hard to come by in foundations, but this one is definitely, definitely, definitely one of my top favorites. And I just absolutely love how my skin looks. It's a, it actually gives me very similar vibes to how the Makeup Atelier one is on my skin. And that's probably why they're both in my top three. So the first concealer is the Kevin Aucoin Central Skin Enhancer. Now I do actually have a few shades of this because I love this for spot concealing on the face, but then I also love it for underneath the eyes. It's definitely not one that I would use to highlight parts of the face or anything like that, um, just because it is quite heavy, but it is very pigmented, like absolutely so full coverage. I can't even believe it. Um, today I have the shade SX08 to show you. This is one that I ordinarily use on my face for like if I have a blemish or anything like that, I will just tap it onto my skin and it will pretty much just cover it up. It's so, so good. I also use the shade SX06 and I use that for underneath my eyes. I don't have any underneath my eyes today, um, but when I do, honestly, you cannot see my under eye darkness whatsoever. Like I can see it in the viewfinder now that I have a little bit of darkness here. But when I wear this, oh my goodness, I have no darkness. Like it's gone. But I don't use this every day just because it is a heavier one. So I only really use it for special occasions or if I want to be like super, super glam. So the next one is an oldie but a goodie. I normally use two shades of this. It really just depends, but I always seem to have two shades of this on hand. It's the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. And my go-to shades are Custard, which is this one here. It's slightly darker. And then I also have Vanilla as well. Vanilla is quite light. I do like it when I'm not as fake tan to kind of like highlight the face and that type of thing. But honestly, these two, I've gone through so many tubes of them. I can't even believe it. But they are just absolutely stunning underneath the eyes. They are quite full coverage. Definitely not anywhere near full, as full coverage as the Kevin Aquan. But... They are still such good coverage, and yeah, I just absolutely love them. I love how they look underneath my eyes. I love that I can use them to highlight my face. They're just great, and the shades are really, really good too. And the last concealer is actually Tarte Shape Tape. Oh my goodness, I love this concealer. This is definitely one of my most used. I actually use this one more than the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I think it's just because the doe foot applicator is so large. You do get so much, so I don't feel like I'm going through them as quickly. And yeah, it's great coverage. So pretty much for me, I've got really, really dark under eye circles. You can watch any of my getting ready with me videos at the start. You can see how dark my under eye circles are. It's purely genetics. I literally could sleep, like have the best night's sleep of my life. I could eat as much iron as physically possible. And... I still have super, super dark under eyes, but that's okay. Um, so that's why I always try and get a super full coverage concealer for under my eyes. And for me personally, I'm quite lucky where I don't really get all that many blemishes. So for me, for concealers, the most important thing is that they look nice under the eyes. So the first powder that I have is actually a loose powder and it's the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. This one is definitely a cult favorite for a reason. I absolutely love how my skin looks when I set it with this, specifically my under eyes. But when I use this powder, I use it for my under eyes and my whole face. And I just really, really like how my skin looks. It sets everything in place. So when I put on bronzer, when I put on anything like that over the top, it doesn't go blotchy or anything like that. And I just absolutely love how it looks. This product is one that I have repurchased because I actually lost it. Weird story. I included it in my haul. Um, but I have it back and I have actually bought a second one. So I absolutely love this. It's definitely one where if I didn't have it in my collection, I would be going out right away and purchasing another one. Okay, so the next powder that I want to show you guys is actually the MAC Studio Fix Press Powder Foundation. So this foundation powder has actually, like seriously, grown with me. I know that sounds so weird, but this is probably one of the only makeup products that has really, truly grown with me. 
no matter what makeup trend or whatever my makeup need was, this powder has honestly been by my side. So the two most common shades that I use is NC30 and NC35. And they're honestly just great. They're such versatile powders or powder, I should say. Just depending on what brush you use, you can get a completely different effect. Like you can have... You can use it as a powder foundation using the sponge or like a denser brush. You can use it as like a light dusting powder, touch up powder. Honestly, this powder has you covered. As long as you don't need a translucent powder, this powder can honestly do anything. It seems. I love it. It's great. And the last powder that I want to show you guys is actually the Laura Mercier Candle Glow Sheer Perfecting Powder in the shade number two. Now, I think that number two was my favorite shade in store. It looks like this, and it does have a similar vibe to like the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders, but I feel like I just like the tone of this one the most. I actually don't have any on my skin now, so I will add some. So I just use like a fluffy brush, and then I just add it to the skin. I actually just love how this kind of blurs the skin a little bit and just adds a little bit of extra radiance. So for me, I really, really like the shade number two, regardless of how fake tanned I am. I feel like because it is such a sheer powder that really adds a little bit of luminosity to the skin, it really doesn't matter like in terms of how light it is because Really, you're using such a small amount that it shouldn't counterbalance the foundation or the powder that you have on top. And you can see how it is quite glowy in the pan as well. And I've used so much of it because it used to look a lot different to how it does now. Because it definitely like was like a dome shape and now it's pretty much flat. But I absolutely love it. Okay, so moving on to bronzer, the first one that I have to show you guys is the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. Now, this was actually the first ever high-end bronzer I ever purchased and I still continue to use it to this day. You'll see quite a few constant themes of products that I've used for years seem to just stick around but then new products that I try here there and everywhere it's really really hard to get into the top. But this bronzer I absolutely love. I know it looks quite light in the pan or it actually looks quite similar to my skin tone but I actually have this bronzer on today um, and I just absolutely love how it looks. I love how this bronzer is a very neutral bronzer. It doesn't show up like heaps on my skin when I'm this tanned but I can use it from when I'm at my tannest which is pretty much around this shade to my lightest which if you go back on my videos you'll see how light my skin can be without fake tan. But I absolutely love this bronzer. It applies so beautifully. It is a beautiful tone. It is matte. And it's just a great base to apply other bronzers over the top or use on its own. And I also love this as an eyeshadow as well. It's just honestly such a good all-round product. I love it. So the next bronzer I have to show you is also from Too Faced. It is the Sweetheart Bronzing Baked Luminous Glow Bronzer in the shade Sweet Tea. I'm pretty sure there's only one shade, but oh my goodness, this bronzer is actually one of my favorites. I love how the finish of this foundation is. Like, it's not sparkly glittery. It is actually just luminous. I also love how there is two sides to it. Like, one that's a bit darker, one that is a bit lighter. I personally just use from the middle and apply it to my face from there. I also have this bronzer on today as well. But yeah, honestly, I just really, really like this bronzer. It gives quite a nice luminous glow. I can use it on its own without the other Milk Chocolate Soleil. But honestly, it is just such a nice bronzer and I always reach for it. That's how I know if I really, really like something is if I keep going back and reaching for it. The next bronzer that I have to show you guys is actually Benefit Hula Light. It's this one here. So you can't buy like this book palette anymore, but you can still buy the individual shades. And I know that sometimes they do come out in like Christmas sets and stuff like that. But anyway, you can tell how much more I use Hula Light compared to Hula, which is here. But I just love a light bronzer. Like I feel like it still adds all the contrast without being too much on the skin. Like I will sometimes use Hula, but definitely nowhere near as much as I use Hula Light or the Too Faced Milk Chocolate. But yeah, so I really, really like this bronzer as well for very similar reasons to why I like the Too Faced Milk Chocolate one. I just feel like the tone of it is great. It's a very neutral color and it doesn't pull too red on my skin. Moving on to blush, I'm going to continue by showing you my favorite blush that's also coincidentally enough in this cheek palette. It's actually Benefit Rockateur blush, which is this one here. It's like a dusty 
pink color and it's definitely more on the neutral side instead of like peachy or anything like that and it does have a beautiful sheen to it i love it on this on the skin and yeah it just gives the most natural wash of pink on my cheeks i love it the other blush that i love is super super pink but it is a little bit peachy as well it's actually nars deep throat blush i love how this looks on my skin if i want like a little bit more like a pop of pink this is such a great blush it's only been in like the last few years that i've actually come around to blush because i really didn't know how to apply it it would end up like just being like all on the side of my face and i'd hate it and it would always be a fail so i'd never use it but in the last few years i've been trying to get better at it and honestly i've really started to come to love blush and then the last blush that I want to show you is actually MAC Warm Soul. This is definitely a cult favorite. And oh my goodness, I just love how this looks on my skin. I love that it is a bit more of like a bronzy blush color. And I love how it kind of like just fuses and becomes one with my bronzer. And I love the luminosity to it as well. I definitely prefer a more luminous blush compared to like a matte blush for the most part because I just love how it looks on the skin and I feel like it's easier to blend in with my highlighter and looks like a bit more seamless if that makes any sense at all. So first highlighter I have to show you guys is actually MAC Soft and Gentle Mineralized Skin Finish. Now this is definitely one that I've only really started liking in the last year or year and a half but I am so glad that I finally come around to this highlighter because it actually looks so beautiful on my skin now. I know when I first started using it, I was a lot more fair than what I am. Sorry, my camera actually just cut out, but what I was saying was when I first started using MAC Soft and Gentle years ago, I think I got like the MAC lady to apply it to my face and oh my goodness, I really didn't like it. I don't know what it was. It must have been because I was a lot more fair than what I was than what I am now and it just kind of looked very dark on my cheekbones it didn't look right whatsoever but I in the last I don't know I don't know when it was but someone told me to pick it up so I did and I applied it to my skin and oh my goodness I love it I love it now it's just a perfect highlighter for the cheeks I what highlighter am I wearing today no, I'm not wearing this highlighter today, but I have used this in a few videos. So if I can find out which ones those are, I'll link them down below for you to see. So the next highlighter I have to show you is actually from the brand Illamasqua, and it's one of their Beyond powders in the shade OMG. It is a beautiful, 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 kind of like a light champagne color with a bit of yellow in it. I did just swatch it on my hand when my, my camera wasn't recording, so that was great, but it looks absolutely stunning on the skin it doesn't look like you're wearing like a foiled highlighter on your cheeks it looks it looks actually quite natural on the skin it obviously looks like you're wearing makeup because you are but it looks very very natural and very in place if that makes any sense and then the last highlighter that I have to show is actually Jouer Citrine Highlighter. This one I have on my cheeks today and I absolutely love how this looks. I think it just works perfectly with any makeup look if you're wanting a more intense highlighter. It is quite a versatile one as well though because today I definitely don't have it on as concentrated or as beaming as what I once used to wear it as. Like, you know when like the beaming highlighters were all the trend? It served me then and it serves me now as like just a lighter highlight. I absolutely love it. It's definitely one of my favorites. That's why it's in this video. But yeah, I will definitely continue to repurchase this once I run out of it. So for setting spray, my first favorite is actually the MAC Fix Plus in the shade Pink Light. If you can see, it's actually got like a luminous pink look to it. And oh my goodness, actually I'm obsessed with this on the skin. It actually just provides a really, really nice fine glow. The only thing that I don't like about this is that you have to make sure to use it properly. Like you can't spray it too close to your face. Otherwise you might get a patch of just shininess on your skin and it will dry like that so I need to always make sure that I've got it like an arm's length away and then spraying it to my face but I absolutely love it it makes any foundation that's looking a bit dull lifeless anything like that it brings it back to life and revives it so I absolutely love this I do I have used the yellow one in the past but I don't know why I just prefer the pink one and how it looks on the skin I think the yellow one 
it's just a bit too yellow for me um, but I absolutely love the pink one it's beautiful so the next one is actually the Scandinavia makeup finishing spray in the bridal style I guess I know they've got a few different ones but the brighter one is the one that I have and I really really like this it makes my makeup stay all day and it's just great it I will still get oily and stuff like that but to be honest it's very rare for me to not get oily but it does make my makeup last all day long I absolutely love it and then the last makeup setting spray that I have is the Urban Decay All Nighter setting spray this one is definitely a staple i've used so many bottles of this in my time but oh my goodness i absolutely love this stuff when i spray this on my face really similar to the skin navia one my makeup is not going anywhere i love it okay so let's talk brows i absolutely love a good brow pomade now one that i've been using for what feels like forever is the dip brow pomade now i do have a few shades of this but this one that i'm showing you now is the shade dark brown so let's talk brows my favorite brow products are brow pomades like they are honestly my absolute favorite and i just love how long wearing they are they fill in my gap where i don't have any brow hairs nicely and i'm not worried about it like washing away or fading away throughout the day the two brow pomades that I absolutely love, love, love is the Nabla Neptune Brow Pot. That looks like that. And then I also have the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. The Anastasia one I've been using for years and I absolutely love it. But I recently got the Nabla one maybe about six months ago and I really just alternate between these two. I think it's just really what tone I prefer each day. The Neptune one by Nabla is definitely a lot more neutral um, compared to the dark brown. But before I had the Neptune, the dark brown seemed so neutral. I also use medium brown as well in the Anastasia one. But both of these I love and I continue to use them in rotation. And then another product from Illamasqua, I've only got one shade to show you, but I actually own three shades, um, is the Illamasqua Eyebrow Cake. Now this one you can use with like a little caking activator and it will make like a pomade equivalent. I've never done that. I don't own that, but I do use it as a brow powder. This one is in the shade Gaze. I do own the shade Motto, which is like more of a grey colour. And then I also own Thunder as well. Um, Thunder is a bit more of a warm brown. I used to mix both of those together, but now I just use this Gaze colour. Because when I first bought them, I was very new to brows, so I didn't want my brows to be too dark. While now, this is literally just my perfect shade. But yeah, the reason why I like this is because it does add additional definition to my brows because obviously if I put a brow pomade in my brows it looks very especially the part of my brow that has no brow hair it kind of looks very I don't even know the word for it but like it doesn't look very like dimensional I guess so I do like to use this when I'm like trying to be a little bit more extra and stuff like that to kind of like add brow strokes into my brow or just to darken my eyebrows in general um I quite often like the tails of my brows to be darker than the center. So I definitely use this when it comes to that. Sometimes if I am feeling really, really brave, I will use this on its own, but that's quite rare. For mascara, I'm not even going to lie to you guys and try and find a third one because I seriously only have two favorites. Um, the first one's actually an eyelash primer, if that even counts, but it's the Tarte Opening Act like as if you can see that because my camera doesn't even autofocus but it's the Tarte opening act eyelash primer i actually had a full size of it and i completely finished that up and then this one came as a sample with my eyelash curler but once this is very close to being finished i will definitely be buying another full size this one i love to apply to my eyelashes because when i actually have this on and then i put normal mascara over the top people actually say oh my god is that your natural lashes like it lengthens your lashes more than what I ever thought a mascara could. Like, you know how there was those mascaras, like there would be the TV commercials or people would say, oh my God, it actually lengthens your lashes. I have short lashes. Like that's why I always wear falsies. I have short lashes. So even if it lengthens my lashes, my lashes still aren't that long. Like it might add like a millimeter to my eyelashes and it's not noticeable at all or it makes them look so spidery, but not with this not with the Tarte Opening Act. 
I'll apply it and then I let it dry and then I go over the top with my mascara. It seems like it doesn't actually matter what mascara you use over the top just because this is such a good base. But I do love the Emco Beauty Lash Extend or Extend Lash, I think it's called. The reason why I like this, and even though I said like with the Tarte Primer, you can use any mascara and you get a good look. The reason why I like this mascara is because it's actually a tubular mascara. It's, I think it's the only tubular mascara that I've been able to find at the drugstore because realistically, like yes, the Tarte Eye Primer is a splurge, but it does truly work for me. But for mascara, I really don't want to be spending more than like $15 on a mascara because they dry up so quickly i also don't want to keep them for that long because hello it's your eye like you don't want to be keeping like a year old mascara you know what i mean like i try and rotate mine out every three months and i'm very diligent with that because that's your eye like that is how you see so i definitely do not play around with that whatsoever but this lash extend i love because it is that tubular formula and it is quite a relatively affordable price i think it's normally about 22 dollars but it's always on sale. Like it's always on sale for like 20% off, 30% off, 40% off. Like it seems like it's always on sale. So I can always get it for around 15 bucks, if not cheaper. But yeah, I definitely love this mascara. It's not like anything mind blowing. Like the wand is such a basic wand, but I think that's why I like it. Like it's just a basic mascara, coats the eyelashes top and bottom really, really beautifully. And then I really have the Tarte Opening Act just through the MGO Beauty ones that was good um but yeah like it just makes for the most perfect combination because I used to get like so much smudging under here and I never used to know why I used to think it was my eyeshadow but no it would always it would happen even when I didn't wear eyeshadow and I used to just wear mascara so so yeah the tubing mascara honestly makes such a difference because it doesn't like come down here it also makes makeup removal so much easier as well like it's not like I've got mascara that's like mixing with my concealer and I'm trying to get both of them off at the same time because that used to be a nightmare. Um, and yeah, overall, just absolutely love it. So for eyeshadow, the first one that I want to talk about is actually Inglot Pigments. The one that I have um, to show you today is actually in the shade number 14 and it's an AMC Pure Pigment Eyeshadow. Now, this one's a beautiful like neutral pink color that I love applying to the eye. And really, it's any Inglot pigment i really really like them you get two grams of product which doesn't sound like a lot but it's like this massive pot i use this color all the time and seriously it still feels like it is full like to the brim full so yeah i don't know i feel like it's really really good value for money and they're quite versatile as well don't get me wrong like a pressed like shadow can be versatile as well but I don't know. I just really, really like these. I think they're very, very good quality. They last a long time on the eye. And yeah, just overall, I just really like them. Okay, moving on with the eyeshadow. So you'll notice that I'm only really talking about single eyeshadows. And honestly, I love single eyeshadows. I actually think that they're so much better than buying palettes because you get exactly what you want. I know when I was younger, I used to buy palettes and still, I still do buy palettes. Like I'm not going to say I don't, but I just feel like with palettes, I will buy them and then I'll literally use one color and then I will leave the rest. So it's like, I may as well just buy the colors that I actually like to use. But in terms of single shadows, I definitely do have my favorite brands. The first one is NARS. Now these are not cheap and they are in the older packaging because well, you get so much product in them and it takes me so long to actually work through an eyeshadow. But these two are honestly staples in my collection. I have Bali here. And then I also have Coconut Grove. These are the only two that I own. Whenever I do want to buy more, it seems like they're always sold out. So it's a bit frustrating trying to get my little paws on them, but I really, really love them. I've got Coconut Grove on the outer part of my eyes today, but yeah, absolutely love these. And they're just so easy. Like if I want to take one or two of them with me on the go, like single shadows, it takes up so much less room than a palette does. Okay, so I do want to talk about Anastasia. So I really, really enjoy their shadows. So I'm just trying to open up a palette. It doesn't really matter if it comes in a palette, which I'm guilty of buying every now and again, 
or singles. I do still feel like I use more single shadows because I definitely gravitate towards more of these cooler tones. Um, I know that that color in the very bottom corner isn't a cool tone, but it was just one. I think, I can't remember how that ended up in my collection. I think one of my friends told me to get it because I said it would look nice on me, which to be honest, I do quite like it, but it definitely doesn't look as nice on me as a cool tone does. But anyway, getting off track there, I absolutely love these shadows. They have such good color payoff. And if you do get a palette that you do quite like the look of, it does work out to be quite cost effective. Otherwise, I love buying single shadows because it just works out to be so much cheaper in the long run and you just get exactly what you want. I am going to be terrible and include a fourth eyeshadow because I don't know, I feel like that pigment doesn't count, but I wanted to talk about it, um, is actually MAC single shadows. So sometimes I buy them in like the little packaging and sometimes I buy them in the loose one, but matte MAC eyeshadows, I absolutely love. I have the shade Omega here and then I absolutely love the shade wedge there's a few other shades that i love as well but yeah i just had to give that a mention because i've been using them for years and i love them they're great so for lip liner i do have three but they're all from the same brand these are pretty much the only lip liners that i use these days i know that before i used to use the Too faced i think it was called like Too faced perfect lips lip liner or something like that that was actually the best lip liner like that was great i think i had it in the shade like perfect spice and perfect nude and it was just amazing but i don't think they make them anymore mac ones are probably like second to that and they are available these days and these are pretty much the only ones that i use now anyway the three shades that i use are whirl i'm not going to bother swatching them because i'm sure you've seen a million other youtubers use them but Whirl, Spice, and Strip Down. Pretty much the three most commonly used ones. If you have a favorite lip liner, can you comment it down below? Because I definitely want to try out more because otherwise I will continue to just buy MAC forever. Okay, moving on to lipsticks. I'm going to make these count as one. I'll try. Please forgive me. But I'm going to say MAC lipsticks are definitely like my favorite lipstick brand like of all time. Out of all the lipsticks that are out there, MAC is definitely my favorite. They've got the best color selection. I love how the matte and the satin ones are. They are my absolute favorites. Two of my most reached for ones though are Faux, which is this one here. It's like a lighter pink shade. And then I do have Velvet Teddy as well, which is like a little bit of a darker pink. I absolutely love these two. One of my other favorites is actually Honey Love. For the life of me, I cannot find my opened one. I only have my brand new one that I only just bought. So I'm not going to open it up just to swatch it. But honestly, like the MAC Satin and the MAC Matte Lipsticks are just divine. I absolutely love how they look. They are just my favorites. And then I do have a liquid lipstick and one from Huda Beauty as well. So from Huda Beauty, it's in their matte lipstick line. I think this one, I purely love it because of the actual color itself. The formula, it's very, very creamy, like a lot more creamy than the MAC ones. And I feel like you go from wearing very little to a lot very quick. So that part I don't really like, but I absolutely adore the color. And once you kind of blot your lips, it like that feeling goes away. But it is the Huda Beauty Matte Lipstick in the shade Wedding Day. I'll swatch it for you. It's actually quite similar to Velvet Teddy, but not really. It is like a little bit more on the cooler side. And I think that's why I do love that shade so much. I don't think that this is like my favorite lipstick line, but this color is definitely one of my absolute favorites. And that's why I reach for it so much. This lipstick was actually the lipstick that I wore to like over half of the wedding dress try on appointments that i had and i had a lot of them so yeah i absolutely love this i love how it looks especially with like bridal which is definitely like the type of look that i'm going for these days considering i'm getting married in a few months but yeah absolutely love it and then for liquid lipsticks i absolutely love truffle by dose of colors it's actually quite a similar tone to wedding day it's that color on the end there and I just absolutely love this lipstick. This is actually like my perfect color, it seems. Like I absolutely love it. These ones are actually quite similar. And you can tell that I definitely love like my pinky, pinky nudes in general. But yeah, I absolutely love this dose of color lipstick. This is actually like my top favorite, I would say. And this is probably the strongest contender for my wedding day so far. 
Okay everyone, so that's my top three favorites for each category of makeup. I hope you guys liked it. And if you guys have a video similar to this or if you want to share your opinions on it, then please put it in the comments down below because I would love to read about it because I don't know why, but I am just obsessed with these types of videos and just reading what people's favorite makeup products are. But anyway, I hope you guys are staying safe. Please don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps me out so much. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.